Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this is part three of a video series on using the uh, template node or, or widget in Node-RED. In this video we're going to look at adding common elements to a Node-RED template. We're going to look at adding graphics um, using SVG, we're going to look at adding material design icons and uh, awesome font icons and we're going to look at adding switches uh, to a, to a template. So okay, this is the flow we're going to use. And we're going to start out with SV, SVG graphics uh, and we're going to add things like traffic lights a lot, or indicator lights. Uh, a lot of people want to add status lights to uh, the template node and we're going to look at doing that and we're going to look at coloring them to changing the color of those, um, of those graphics. And then we're going to move on and we're going to look at the material design icons which is over here and we're going to have an example on uh, Font Awesome and then we're going to introduce a switch and a, and a checkbox and we're going to look at adding those to a, a template node or widget. So let's start off with the SVG. Now if you're new to SVG, which, is, uh, which I am because I'm not a web developer, um, you'll find this tutorial very useful and I got uh, the example co code from here. So I'll put a link to this in the description below. I've also created a resource comment box here in the flow which you, is going to be available for download and it has a list of links to the resources that you'll find useful on using uh, SVG graphics, um, material design icons etc. You'll find them all here and say that's part of the flow if you download it. I say they'll also be in, in the description. So this is the flow I'm going to use and this is the display produces and we'll start off with the first one which is this one here the template node and there's nothing in here except the the code to produce the icon and you can see here the code it's a circle and there's the item width and we're going to fill it with black there's a the color and if we look at what it produces you can see here it's a black image so that's pretty useless on its own. So what we're going to do now is change the color of that icon and we've got a, an inject node, again a template node and again in here we've got our circle but this time we're going to change the color of it using this structure. Remember back to the earlier video we're going to bind this, this field here and we're going to send in a message uh, icon fill and we're going to change the color using this this field here. So we're going to do that in the function node and if we go back to the function node and we're going to fill it red. That's all we're going to do. And so if I inject now we got a red icon. Now in the next example we're going to change the, the, not only the color we're going to change the height and the width of the of the circle and if we go back to the template node for this and we look at it we can see here for the height here I've got message dot icon dot height and then same for the width and a same for the color icon fill and again we use a function node and we create an icon object and the prompt is the fill is green, the height is 50 and the width is 50 and then we just can pass that object on in the return message and click done and if I inject you can see here the status is green you can't see the um, size uh, very much because the other one was 40 this one's 50 but it does the, it does the job and for the last example we're going to implement what we call a status uh, icon and we got here inject nodes injecting the values of 0 and 1 into this template and in the template we've got this code here now what this is saying is if the message.payload is true then we're going to have it green and if it's false we're going to have the color red and this is modeled on the example they give over here which is a bit more complex than this one uh, but this one will work so if it's true it's green if it's false it's red and 
here we've got 0 and 1 so 0 is false and 1 is true so if I inject 0 in there then we should see it go to red and if I inject 1 in there we should see it go to green okay so that works okay now we're going to move on to material design icons now they've moved down here they used to be up here now but they've moved down because I've added the button uh, here and here we've got a, an alarm and what I'm going to do is show you how to insert the alarm icon and how to actually change it and if we go over to the material design uh, website and again this is in the resources box you can see a list of the icons here and our alarm is here you see we got a, a alarm add alarm alarm off alarm on so we've got different icons for different states and we're going to concentrate on using uh, uh, these these icons in the template node but I wanted to also show you you can add them to the standard uh, UI um, nodes like the button node or the text input node and you can see here I've got an alarm icon here on this button and the way I did that is quite simple if I go down to the button which is here I just type in the name here so I've got alarm and I could put alarm let's see what we've got alarm on and change that it's underscore and deploy it so you can see the icon has changed to alarm on in the in the button node so let's go and look at how we add these uh, icons to the template node so we're going to start off with a very basic one and what we're going to look at is w this one here and you can see the alarm is on and if I look at the template and you can see here I'm using a table so this is part of the um, table element so I need to give the table element a class um, called material icons if this was in a paragraph I'd, I would give the paragraph a class uh, if it was in um, a span I'd give the span a class but it has to be called material icons and then I type in the name of the icon MD dash alarm on a material design alarm on and that's all I need to display the icon you, and you can see the icon displayed here so let's go back to so sorry let's go down to the second example and this time we can actually send in the icon name using this message.alarm so we're going to put it in the alarm attribute of the message object and again notice the class here that's very important you have to have the the class otherwise it doesn't show and again we've got a function node to drive it and here if the message dot payload zero the alarm is off and if it's one the alarm is on so we've got two inject nodes so if we set it to zero the alarm should be off you see the alarm is off and if I set it to one the alarm should be on you can see the alarm is on here now we can also change the color and the size of the icon and to learn how to do that you need to go to this page here it's a github page and it explains how to do it uh, I'm not going to go through that page the resource is in the resource box so you can you can find it now if I go down to the template you can see here I've created classes here material icons MD48 this is the size and I've created one for the dark just going to show dark icon and one for inactive and it uh, changes the color of that icon and again if we, I go down to here you can see here I've given the item class it's a size 48 now the whether it's dark or inactive is going to be passed through here 
in this variable here and the alarm icon is going to be passed through this variable here and say the the size of it is fixed is, is 48 I could pass that through as well as a variable so I could pass all three parameters as a variable but I only pass the two the actual alarm itself the alarm icon and the color of that icon so if I go back to the, sorry if I go to the function node that drives it you can see here if it's zero then the alarm is off and I'm using dark and if it's one the alarm is on and I'm using inactive so let's try it Z inject a zero the alarm is off inject a one the alarm is on and you can see the size of the icon is different it's a larger icon and the color or style of it is different it changes whether it's on or off okay now if you want to use the font awesome icons you can as well and here's an example of those this is a small thermometer and a large thermometer and this is the template that does it and you can see here notice it's a slightly different syntax here we're using a class we need a class we have to use an i class i don't know why so i class fa space and then the name of the actual icon this is the thermometer this is empty and again same same icon here but a different size using this one here three times this is fa three times again the syntax is described in the resource and up the, the resources in the resource box so you can learn about that if you need to I just thought I'd show you so you can actually see that it can be done and the syntax is different so temptation is to try and use a similar syntax to what you did in the um, material design but it is slightly different okay let's move on to our last example and this is our slider and our checkbox here so we've got a template and we're feeding into a debug node and if we look at the template so this is the template now we're using HTML here we're using the input type is range which says it's a switch we can set the maximum minimum values which we got here minimum maximum and when we click it we send the message and we've bound this to the switch attribute so we should see message.switch coming out of here and we see it in the debug node and we've done a similar thing with the checkbox so it's a type of checkbox again ng model is a message dot box so we should see a, a box attribute coming out of here and when it's true we set to one and when it's false we set to zero and again when we change it we send out the message so let's look at the display so if we use the slider we can see here it's changed and the switch attribute is there the box is set to zero and if we tick the box we can see here the box is set to one slider hasn't changed okay so that's how to add a switch and a slider I will try and put together a, a flow with various methods of doing switches and sliders besides what I, I showed you there because there are a few different ways of doing it so I'll try and make time and actually put together a, a separate thing or a separate resource for that and I'll put it on the website so that's it that's the end of the video if you've enjoyed the video then click on the the like button below if you've got comments to the video then you can use the comment form below if you'd like to get notified to new videos on the channel then you can click on the subscribe button and don't forget to click on the notification bell to get notified if you use social media and want to share it on social media then please feel free I also publish an occasional newsletter and you can sign up to, for that newsletter if you go over to the site and uh, click on the uh, sign up form 
So, until next time, goodbye.